How we accommodate pedestrians and bicycles through an intersection uh, obviously is important, particularly in an urban area like this. It becomes easier at a roundabout for a pedestrian to cross the intersection because of the number of reduced conflict points. They always look in the same direction. Cars always approach them. So as they step off the curb, cars always approaching them from their left. So they have to look at one car and deal with that one car at a time. It puts the onus on the pedestrian to make an uh, an intelligent decision rather than telling, le rather than letting the intersection signal light tell them when to walk. They can walk based on when it's safe. And so they just, they just need to remember that, to look in just one direction at a time and handle one, one conflict vehicle at a time. They can cross relatively short sections of roadway and deal with only one conflict of traffic. In the case of bicyclists, it's probably more a case of your experience level. If you're a very experienced rider, you take the road, you become a vehicle. If you're a less experienced rider, there's escape lanes that allow you to get off the bike lane, get onto the sidewalk, and actually become kind of a pedestrian and move through just as you would as a pedestrian. And roundabouts, there's a lot of uh, different opinions in terms of roundabouts and how well they, they accommodate uh, disabled uh, people. Uh, the ramps, have been changed a little bit in terms of how they're approaching and going through the crosswalks. ADA requirements are a problem. Uh, we, we've been an, on a learning curve there, as has the whole nation, because the rules related to Americans with Disabilities Act are in the process of being revised. And it's not entirely clear how that's going to affect our roundabouts. The main thing at these intersections is, uh, is trying to provide uh, safe access and uh, there are different, different disabilities have different restrictions. Uh, wheelchair access through a roundabout is actually very good uh, because of the short distances that need to be traveled before reaching a refuge area and av having only to deal with one direction of traffic at a time. Uh, so far we have had no complaints from anyone in Bend about the um, accessibility of the roundabouts that we've built to date. Roundabouts look a lot better than a, than a signal. Uh, you can dress them up pretty nicely as you, you know can be seen around Bend, Oregon. There's a lot of artwork that's going into the middle of the roundabouts. We're doing a lot of nice landscaping. Art in Public Places came to the city with this concept of putting art in all of the roundabouts in the city of Bend. We leapt on the idea because it was such a beautiful mix of traffic resolutions with beauty and art in the city. It makes Bend a very unique place, it makes our traffic a very fun um, experience, and it showcases stunning art as well. Actually, we ended up in the middle of roundabouts at the suggestion of the Bend Foundation. Um, they presented us with an opportunity, and uh, we uh, at this point have commissioned uh, over $400,000 worth of art and look forward to uh, hopefully increasing that in the future. Of course, art is a very subjective thing, so not everybody is absolutely wild about every piece of art that goes into every um, roundabout, and we're dealing with that on a case-by-case -case basis, recognizing that the city doesn't judge good art versus bad art, and that part of the purpose of art is to spark the dialogue, to spark the civic debate, and in all those respects, we consider this a huge success. Well, po probably the piece that's, that's most galvanized the community to start discussing about the role of art in public places has been the uh, Kinetic Phoenix that went in the 14th and Galveston roundabout. That's the one we're hearing the most comments about, I think because it's the most provocative piece. It's the piece that invites the most discussion. I think the roundabouts are a really logical spot for um, public art, and it certainly has a, uh, an opportunity for many, many people to see it, both our uh, residents and the visitors to Central Oregon. The art is something that complements the landscaping and complements the whole design. It's, it's another feature. It's a, an important feature in my eyes. This is our city's first roundabout. It's particularly beautiful because of the work that was done, both in terms of the design and the construction, that preserved the three beautiful ponderosa trees in the center. And then in addition to that, landscaping was added. And the landscaping's fantastic. They're all native species to our area. I have asked a lot of my membership what they feel about roundabouts. And 90% of them feel that they are a good thing. 
Um, there are some roundabouts that are smaller than others and it's a little more difficult to have some of the larger trucks go around them, but on balance that roundabouts are a good thing and they are glad that they're in our town. From a public perspective, I think it's being more and more accepted over time. There was a lot of apprehension at first before we had the first one, that kind of the fear of the unknown. As people have driven them and learned to drive them, I think they see, that and, see and feel advantages as they move through an intersection. Well, the Old Mill really uh, appreciates the city's bringing the roundabout to uh, the Old Mill District to have this as one of their main entrances on the south end. And uh, we've entered into an agreement with the city to uh, landscape and maintain the landscape on that and uh, to make it something that will draw you into the Old Mill District. Well, anything new like this with roundabouts, I personally happen to like them and so forth, but it's a change. It's a change in driving habits. For the businesses, it, it, it can be a real advantage if there's easy access in and out of the business. The community is accepting these, and once they learn how to negotiate a roundabout, there's a bit of a learning curve. Once they understand that, the community really enjoys these things, and uh, we've, we've found them to be a very efficient way to move traffic. I've gotten comments from people in the various neighborhoods around uh, that surround the roundabout, various roundabouts that they take pride of that roundabout. That piece of art in their roundabout is their piece of art. That roundabout is their roundabout. And I've seen a complete turnaround in the perception that people have um, about the intersection. They don't no longer see it as a uh, death trap. I think the more people use them, the more they like them. I'm glad that the city of Bend, the citizens of Bend, are open to new designs and new ideas. I believe that there was a vision of uh, some of our city officials and our counselors about what roundabouts would do and um, I think that vision was communicated uh, from the staff level to the, ca to the counselors in a very proactive way where they all came together and said yes we think this is going to be a good idea and I do believe it was about communication. I think that's reflected in the roundabout design. It's something that you don't see in many cities in the U.S. The citizen, citizens of Bend have um, agreed to allow these types of intersection improvements over the traditional masses of asphalt and I think that's a real tribute to the citizens of that. That wraps another City Edition. If you have any questions about our Roundabout program or the City of Bend in general, please give us a call at 541-388-5505. Thank you for joining us.